conference schedule begins in late February. You're talking about a Catamount team that is leaning on Spencer. He's got 135 yards on 25 carries in their two ball games, a loss at Liberty and a loss at Eastern Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. Daquan Patton, Reggie Jones deep. And we go from Chapel Hill, and there will be no return, so the Catamounts of Mark Spear will take over at their 25-yard line. And that means that the, the quarterback of Western Carolina is redshirt junior Will Jones. He's a North Carolinian from Greensboro, played at Page High School for Kevin Gillespie. and took the team to a state title ball game, and you see through four starts, 10 total touchdowns and 1,000 yards in his Western Carolina career. They've been using two quarterbacks, Roddy, but the, the other quarterback in the mix, uh, Mark Wright, did not make the trip. So this will be Will Jones' ball game today for Western Carolina. And the first down give, and this is Makai Stanley picking up almost five yards on the play. So the Catamounts will have it second and five. West, 49 so many of these 17, guys. the loss a couple of weeks ago, Roddy, excuse me, at Eastern Kentucky for Western Carolina, who actually uh, also played at Liberty the week prior to. Yeah, so so many of these guys have been looking forward to, to this game because of the fact that they come from North Carolina. A lot of them grew up Tar Heels fans, so it's cool for them to get this opportunity. This is Spencer's first carry. And Donovan Spencer picks up almost seven on second down to give Western Carolina a first down chance. And there is the ninth year head coach of the Catamounts, Mark Spear, a native of Kannapolis, North Carolina. And a graduate of Clemson, where he worked as a student assistant. He has uh, had a lot of experience in the state of North Carolina and in South Carolina in his football journey prior to becoming the head coach in uh, late December of 2011 in Cullowee. First and 10 for Western Carolina. And Jones gets rolled around by Taman Fox after a pickup of a yard or so. You mentioned the fact that Mark Wright is out, Wes. The, the junior college transfer is a little bit better runner than Will Jones, but they will still do a lot of this quarterback run with Will Jones in the game. And early on, you can see Western Carolina not afraid to go right at this North Carolina defense. It'll so be second and nine for the Catamounts in North Carolina defensively allowing 157 yards a ball game. Here is a second and nine for the Catamounts. And this will be Jones again, keeping it on the replay. And there's Chaz Surratt, the Tar Heels leading tackler, coming into the ball game and a semifinalist for the Buckus Award, Roddy. He's one of the best linebackers in the entire country. He's done such a great job of being a leader on this team through the coaching transition, the former quarterback deciding to go to linebacker. And in talking to Jay Bateman, there's still a lot of room for him to grow, but his progression over the course of his career as a linebacker has been really impressive. So third and four for Western Carolina. They were three of 15 two weeks ago at Eastern Kentucky on third down. Tar Heels held Notre Dame to 4 of 11 eight days ago here at Keenan. Jones wants to throw and will sail it out of bounds. And that will bring the punting unit on for Coach Spears' team. Pressure from Tavon Fox. Looked like Will Jones wanted to go to the bottom of the screen and had to get the ball out quick because Tavon Fox was unblocked. And wasn't able to do it and had to throw the ball away after getting a first down, which is some positives to build on for Western Carolina. They end up getting stopped and have to punt. You know, five plays and now the punt. And we get our first opportunity there. The ball got driven away by Brandon Dickerson. And the Tar Heels handling the punt. Back here to the near side, Daz Newsom. And that'll get us to a timeout. Almost three minutes gone in Chapel Hill. No score. Sam Howell and the Heels are next. From Indian Trail, North Carolina, Sam Howell, Roddy. He's been 
one of the best players in the entire country. He's coming off not his best game, so he's looking to rebound today. Michael Carter turns the corner and knocked out of bounds after a 10-yard run to the 39. Tally, the safety there on the stop, playing for the uh, Jacob Harris, the normal safety spot in that secondary. Yeah, we had a great time talking with Sam Howell just about how he's approaching this game like any other, but the things that he wants to improve on in the offseason as well. Carter off the throw and pushed out of bounds after game seven on the play by Tally again. You know, Wes, in, in talking to Sam, I, I thought it was really interesting that he told us you know, his, his comfort in the pocket is the big thing that he's going to look for in the offseason to try and get better at, and as the season ends as well. Yep, and here's the first touch of the day for Javante Williams, and across midfield, the 44 of the Catamounts go the Tar Heels on the 10-yard play. Another tackle for Tally, and Carolina moving it through the gearbox here on their opening drive, Roddy. Yeah, and just giving it to those running backs over and over in the pass game. And here's Williams again inside the 35, 34-yard line. Another play by Tally. And a marker on the play. Personal foul. Legal block below the waist. Number 68, offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Brian Anderson, the center. Take a look at the right side of your screen. You see Brian Anderson engaged, and while he's engaged, he then goes down, and yeah, you can't do that. That is, uh, it's a pretty easy one for the referees, especially when you get those zone plays and the linemen get separated. Pretty easy to see that. Yep. Pushes the Tar Heels back to their 46 on their opening drive. Howell, another throw to the perimeter. This time, Diami Brown, the catch near midfield. Well handled by the Catamounts. The corner, Ronald Kent, who Andy McCollum, their defensive coordinator, is excited about. He certainly is. Says he's a guy that just overcomes the limitations that he has, only listed at 165 pounds, but does a really nice job of open field tackling against an explosive receiver. Second and 16 for Carolina. There's Howell now, looking a little further down the field. Catch is made, and Daz Newsom works his way down toward the 30-yard line, where he got knocked out of bounds. The linebacker, Curtis Roach, there on a 17-yard throw. And a really nice job of Sam Howell operating in that pocket, not getting frazzled. And the longer the play went, does a nice job of sliding up, goes from one read to another. Daz Newsom just sits down in an open spot in the zone. It's a nice pickup for Carolina. First down in 10. At about five minutes and change, and Carter gets the carry for a couple of yards there. Pickup of almost four on first down for Michael Carter. Why do we talk about these two guys in the open as Milner makes the stop for Western Carolina? The, the combination is lethal. The individual numbers are still really, really strong. You see Carter's run numbers coming into the ball game. Here's Howell on a play fake again. Dumps it back. This is Walston, the tight end, down to the 17, and a Tar Heel first down on the tackle by A.J. Rogers. The thing you've seen with Sam Howell early in this game is just his overall comfort in this offense. Knows exactly where the answers are so far in this game. He seems to be really locked in. Carter on the carry and the touchdown for Carolina. Michael Carter makes it look easy on a 17-yard run, and the Tar Heels on the board. This run is going to be on the offensive line's highlight film. I mean, this is a great job by the offensive line. Just getting a hat on a hat. Michael Carter trots into the end zone. It's about as uh, it's about as easy as it gets if you're a running back right up the middle through a giant hole. Nine plays, 71 yards. Just better than three minutes for Carter to pick up the touchdown. His fifth of the year, Roddy. And again, this one's going to be on the offensive line. Everybody finds their man. Michael Carter has the easy job of just easing it on into the end zone. By the way, 
tied the uh, ACC record for passing scores in a ball game, and the Tar Heels <laughs> won a shootout, 59-53 over Dave Clawson's club. And kick through the end zone will send Western back to the 25 to start their second possession. Mac Brown's team fell behind Roddy, and they just started looking at the record book. What could we do? 21 points, second half comeback, 742 yards, and the 550 by Howes, one of the top four performances in ACC history. Yeah, they found a weakness in that Wake Forest defense, and they just went through it over and over and over. How much fun was that game, though? Sign me up for games like that every week. So here is Will Jones and the Catamounts going to work. First down give is Donovan Spencer. And the ball popped out of there, and it looks like it's recovered by Dequan Patton. Spencer had, Spencer had it knocked out of there, but Patton, fifth-year senior from Columbia, South Carolina, falls on. Very fortunate bounce for Western Carolina. Sometimes that oblong ball falls right into your hands, and that's the case here. It actually gets kicked by a Carolina player yeah. right to Dequan Patton. So. Mr. Johnny on the spot to Quan Patton, saving the day. I said Spencer it was Bradley on the carry. Or Makai Stanley, I beg your pardon, on the carry that time. And here comes Jones, a little speed option into the boundary side, and that is Spencer. Taking off in front of the Carolina bench. Strong run by Donovan Spencer. I like the little speed option look here, Roddy, by the Catamounts. I do as well. Offensive coordinator John Holt's done a nice job mixing in some zone read. You got some speed option there. Keep, kind of keeping this Carolina defense off balance. First down and 10, right at midfield. Tar Heels on the board already with a Michael Carter touchdown run, and now Adamus trying to get something going. That's Jones in motion. And Spencer again hit the cutback. And Donovan Spencer finally tackled by Don Chapman out of the Tar Heels secondary. 11 yard run, Larissa. Well, one of the things that uh, Coach Mark Spear told us that he was looking for from his guys, especially with them being such a young group, is just a certain mentality. What is your attitude like? Precision and purpose. Do you have it? He said that's an area that they have to work on and also effort. But when it comes to the precision and purpose part, he was pertaining to or focusing rather on details. Do you understand the details? Yeah. You got to find those guys because most of these FCS schools have taken the fall off. Western Carolina is one of a handful and a big play there by the Tar Heels. As you see crashing in was Desmond Evans, number 10, leading the charge behind the line, Ronnie. Yeah, I'm not sure if this was a designed give, but if it was not, Will Jones certainly should have pulled it. He was absolutely swallowed by Desmond Evans. Desmond Evans, a freshman, true freshman, that they are really excited about. We're going to see a, a number of those guys here today. Desmond Evans, uh, Kim on Rucker, Clyde Pender, Miles Murphy is a part of in the front seven is a part of that freshman class that Mac Brown and Jay Bateman are really excited about. No doubt. Second and a dozen after the loss there. Jones trying to cut it loose and the catch is made. Reggie Jones. The redshirt junior from Sharpsburg, Georgia. Just short of the first down. Like the transformer face mask there. It may have helped him with that contested catch because it looked like Patrice Rene was draped all over him. Nice delivery by Will Jones and a nice catch on the other end. Third and short here for the Catamounts. Expect him to go with that zone read or maybe a speed option, something that that allows them to read one of these end players for North Carolina. Spencer is the back with Jones in the pistol here. And Jones on the follow and will get the first down to the 24-yard line of Carolina. Don Chapman again comes up on the safety spot to make the play. It looks like this may have been some midline action or, or a quarterback follow one way or the other. You get that extra blocker up the middle and Will Jones able to pick up the first down. John Holt going strong with the with the, the read game and the quarterback run with Will Jones. Not exactly what we expected coming into this. Thought that would have been more Mark Wright's game, but with Wright out, Will Jones stepping in very well. So the two-back package now has Spencer and Stanley there. 
Trying to create a pocket for Jones, and the ball incomplete for Donovan Spencer. So it'll be second down and 10. They had exactly what they wanted here. Donovan Spencer on Jeremiah Kimmel on a little seam right out of the backfield. The throw just a little too high for the running back. You got to make it easy on those running backs, Wes. Donovan Spencer not able to bring it in. But Western Carolina got exactly what they wanted on that one. And a little bit better throw, and that's a touchdown. He just wears number 20, so I know you're partial to catch it. We're 20. Uh, always. Always. <laughs> Second Automatically and ten. my favorite player if you're a number That's 20 running back. Exactly right. Second and 10 off the Tar Heel 26. Another throw on the perimeter. Spence made one guy miss. And then finally, Trey Morrison, who's had a nice season out of the Tar Heel secondary, comes up and makes the stop. Third down coming. Chris Collins had a shot on him in the backfield. Just not quite. Oh, just a little bit of a block there. Ooh. A nice job out on the perimeter. I think that was Owen. Kasinki. Right. Yeah, Owen Kasinki made that block. A nice job. Just a little nudge to spring his running back. So here's third down and seven. Jones to throw and dropped. Looking for Jacoby Quillian, a freshman from Florence, South Carolina. Had him right there where they needed him, Roddy. Uh, true freshman, and this throw is a little bit high, but you got to come down with that. You're on the big stage in Keenan Stadium against one of the most explosive offenses on the other side. And your offensive put together a good drive. Got to bring that one in, young fella. Here's Paxton Robertson, whose only field goal was 52 yards a couple of weeks ago at Eastern Kentucky. And now a timeout will be called. You saw Western Carolina hurry the guy on, but I think Mark Spears' kick unit got confused. Well, the uh, Catamounts tried to get that kick cover unit set. And now Paxton Robertson out of the timeout is going to try a 40-yarder. He had the 52-yarder two weeks ago at Eastern Kentucky. This to put the catamounts on the board. And Robertson punches it through. 40-yard try. Mark Spear fired up for his team. They get on the board here with four and a half to go in quarter one should be fired up for his team. That was an excellent drive from Western Carolina. Converted a couple of third downs there. We're able to get down the field on a Carolina defense that obviously has the physical advantages, but they found some stuff that works. Some zone play, some zone read. Been able to run the football, and if it weren't for a drop or a better throw uh, earlier in that drive, they may have gotten seven out of it. Yep, so Robertson puts them on the board. Quick reminder to you, we've got two more ball games coming up for you. ACC football presented by Dr. Pepper is next from over in Raleigh. Chris Cotter, Mark Herzlick, and our man Eric Wood on the call of Georgia Tech and NC State. And then ACC primetime football presented by Geico tonight from the fabled horseshoe on the West Campus, Roddy. Number 10, Miami and Duke. We welcome Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselback, and Katie George, who had a birthday this week. Happy birthday, Katie. They'll Happy be with you tonight Katie. at 8 o'clock from Wallace Wade State. It'll be good to, to, to hear Dave O'Brien and Tim Hasselbeck, see them, and see Miami. All three of those uh, those entities have been missing from our ACC lives for a while. Yep. Toe Groves was deep, but Western Carolina trying this short kick, and looked like Garrett Walston came up to challenge it. And then the ball went out of bounds at the 42-yard line. We'll wait on referee Gary Patterson and his crew to sort this out right there in front of Coach Brown at the Tar Heel bench. Garrett Boston was trying to come up and field that. North Carolina was very fortunate to bounce out of bounds instead of bouncing towards the field. Holding on the field, the receiving team touched the ball prior to going out of bounds. It'll be the receiving team's ball at the spot out of bounds. First down. That's Thank you. 
Watch where this hits, Wes. It's an excellent job of execution, kind of dropping it into that no man's land. And if that falls, if that bounces back towards the field, Western Carolina's got a lot of players around that would have had a really good shot to recover that. By the way, there were a lot more white shirts than blue shirts around that ball with Walton. Here's Howell. He's going to try and cut it loose deep, and it is overthrown looking for Deami Brown. And Deami Brown one-on-one -on -one in coverage, and he wins this one a lot. One of the fastest players in the ACC. Sam Howell got hit as he was throwing that ball, or else he probably would have made a little bit more accurate throw. He doesn't miss those very often. Aaron Gathers, who started his college career at Boston College, was in coverage for Western Carolina. Howell's first miss of the day followed up with his sixth completion, and that's Daz Newsom. On the back end of the throw. Newsom came in, Roddy, nine catches behind Deami Brown in the Tar Heel order, 15th in the league in receiving yards, over 500 again for Daz Newsom on the season. Where it was like a 1A, 1B a year ago, has it separated a little bit this fall, you think? Yeah, it has. And we talked to Phil Longo about it, and he basically said, look, it, that's a sign of respect for what Daz Newsom has done. Somehow picks up the first down and goes for more. Absolutely. Inside the 25 before Howell is angled out on the play. Ronald Kent, the corner, had to help number seven to the far sideline. Yeah, we had North Carolina the first game of the year, and Sam Howell said, I've worked on my mobility. I've worked on pulling the ball down and running a little better. And how about that? Like, he has shown some ability in the open field to make some people miss. He's been going to the Michael Carter School of saucing guys in the open field. They called it 30 yards for Howell. Here's a quick throw, middle of the field. The catch is made and into the end zone. Antoine Green for the Carolina touchdown. when we had our conversations with the Carolina coaches yesterday, Phil Longo said, hey, look, if we can get a guy to make some plays, I want it to be Antoine Green, a guy he recruited heavily when he was at Ole Miss, gets to North Carolina, and there Antoine Green is, and just has gotten stuck behind guys like Deami Brown, Emory Simmons, Daz Newsome, but an extremely talented receiver that he wanted to get some plays to, and he does it right there. Four plays, 58 yards, 65 seconds on the Tar Heel touchdown drive. Carolina, if this stands, will have their 116th play over 15 yards this year, Roddy. Wow. Off that replay, it's going to be bang, bang. The, the forearm hits, the knee hits, right as that ball is getting close to the end line. So get another look at this. Take a look at that left forearm and the knee. Forearm's down right there. That's the first thing to hit down is the ball across the goal line. I think it's broken the plane at that point. I think this will stand off of that look, but see what the referees determine. I think the first look is probably the one. And After again, further review, he, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. There you go. So the play stands. So, Roddy, quick summary. No indisputable video evidence for the reversal. Absolutely. And Antoine and I think it's Green the right in the end zone. Yep. So here is the point after for Grayson Atkins, who a year ago was kicking against Western Carolina as a member of the Furman Paladins. The point for Atkins is good, and it's an 11-point lead for Carolina, and another mark for Sam Howell on the season. Touchdown pass number 25, but 63 in his career leaves him one shy of Brent Renner, now working on the staff at Florida International, and of course, Darian Durant who started in the John Bunning era back in early 2000s. Going on a limb and say Sam Howell is probably going to get that before the season's out. I know it's going out on a limb. <laughs> well, 25 touchdowns for Howell. First in the ACC, fourth national. 
Roddy, you look at just the comparable numbers, completion percentage, passing yardage, efficiency, yards per game, yards per attempt. Um, through just two seasons of football, there's a lot to take in when you talk about number seven. I think you have found a, a perfect marriage with a guy in Sam Howell who just absorbs the knowledge and everything that goes into this offense and an offensive coordinator in Phil Longo that tailors his offense to what the strengths of his players are. There will be a return here. This is Reggie Jones across the 25 and knocked out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Jones had been averaging 19 and a half yards on his returns. That's his best of the year. He had a 27-yarder a couple of weeks ago at Liberty. So he'll give Will Jones a good spot to start from the Western Carolina 31 yard line for the Catamounts who are 0 and 2 in this brief fall campaign that features three contests and then in late February they will get to their eight game Southern Conference schedule when ironically they play at Furman on February the 20th like a lot of FCS conferences the Southern going with a spring schedule it covers February March and portions of April Here's Spencer on the first down carry for the Catamounts. And, and Ronnie, you have to respect what tackle made by Jeremiah Gimmel, by the way. You have to respect the concept of these schools in FCS that have gone out and played some of these games here and there. And Mark Spears said, look, it's not for everybody. And they waited, you know, until November to kind of dip their toe in the pool. We saw some Jacksonville State and some others at FCS maybe sample the schedules in September and October before. They bowed away to play their regular season in the spring, too. Second down and eight now for the Catamounts. Jones. And overthrows the intended receiver. And that's Daquan Patton. And Patton is the son of one of the great players in Western Carolina history. And for that matter, a Super Bowl champion, David Patton. Well, that's a that's a name that New England fans will certainly remember and appreciate. But, but let's go back to what you said about Mark Spear. I mean, he told us they've got 52 true or redshirt freshmen, and, and the practices that they got this fall because of the fact that they're playing these three games are invaluable and something that he really wanted going into that spring season. Yep, third down and eight, and the throw offline for Spencer. Again, Catamounts had a guy in spot, Roddy. Right? You just got to clutch the football. Got to catch it. I mean, this is it, when you're up against a, a team that, that you're clearly overmatched against, you got to make these simple plays. I mean, that's not North Carolina making a play. That's Western Carolina not doing it. So uh, Mark Spear, when he goes back and watches the early film of this game, he's going to say, guys, we just have to do the little things, catching the football, delivering an accurate pass when you've got an open receiver, and we could have really competed early on. Daz Newsom back to take the punt of Brandon Dickerson here. At the 24, here's Newsom. Looking for an alley, 35-40. Newsom chopped down at the 46-yard line, and nice return by Newsom. Tar Heels near midfield with just better than... Two minutes left to go, 43-yard punt, 24-yard return, Ronnie. Well, Mark Spears said he wasn't going to kick it to Daz Newsom. Uh, he, he has done it twice, and this is, and that's borderline abuse, Wes. You get pushed in the face like that. That's a, that's a stiff arm that you put on the highlight film. That's one that you are certainly going to remember. Daz Newsom coming with the power of the stiff arm. Well, that's the punter, Brandon Dickerson. On the back end of that, Carolina from its 46. Two touchdowns and two possession for Howell and the Tar Heels. And Walston on the catch. Hampton and Kent on the stop for Western Carolina. Outside. Defense, number 48, five yard penalty. Repeat first down. And there's a flag from referee Gary Patterson and the explanation. You see on the screen, don't forget college football playoff semifinals, New Year's Day, the Rose Bowl at 5, and the All-State Sugar Bowl, 8.45. On ESPN, 
your home of the college football playoffs. Here's Howell on the first and five. A little read play for Sam Howell and enough for the first down before Hampton makes the stop after an 11-yard run. Sam Howell does a nice job on the zone read. I'm not going to lie, though, Wes. I, I don't really want to see Sam Howell running the ball a whole lot in this game. Maybe when he has to, and I know it's it's not a big part of Phil Longo's game plan, right. but in this one, I, I want Sam Howell sitting in the pocket delivering the football. This is one of those where y you have the game in hand. Let's just uh, let's protect our quarterback. Here's Howell. Quick throws on the slant, and the catch is made, and it's... Is that Henry oh, Simmons? It sure is. Simmons. Caught in the traffic. He made a great catch last week against Notre Dame for the touchdown. This is a pretty good one, too. It's a really good one. And North Carolina is just so loaded at this position. You're likely going to have to fill a couple spots next year. Here's Carter bouncing again and stretching for the touchdown. Michael Carter makes it three possessions, three touchdowns for Carolina. Took A.J. Rogers into the end zone with it, Roddy, for the score. 11 players on the field. He's two for three. Touchdown. He's two for three in terms of those touchdowns. It was a penalty on the play. I think Western Carolina may have had too many players on the field, but it didn't matter because none of them could tackle Michael Carter. He's got his second one on the board already. So Carter gets the score. Atkins for the point. And it's 21 to 3. Carter's got now runs of 17 and 22 here in this first quarter. Very similar to the first touchdown, just his own play up the middle. He's got a nice hole, had a little more to do on the back end there. Stiff arms one Western Carolina defender, drags the other one into the end zone. We talked about him at the top. He and Javante Williams, two of the most difficult backs to tackle in the entire country. Michael Carter is off to a nice start to his day. And the Tar Heels have outscored opponents now 132 to 54 in the opening quarter this year. And Carolina has two touchdowns, Roddy, and about a minute and a half, or two and a half minutes, I should say. Kick will be away from Jones through the end zone on the bounce. Western Carolina starts at its 25 for the fourth possession here. Well, Williams and Carter, pick your poison, Roddy. When you have a duo that's as dynamic, it, it very well could be Javante Williams with those numbers if he had just been in on those plays. But 53 yards, two touchdowns, four carries, two touchdowns. That's a pretty... It's a pretty good average right there. It's a pretty good ratio uh, in terms of getting the football and getting in the end zone. I'll tell you, the, uh, the thing that you look at with Carter and Williams, it, then you talk to Phil Longo and Mac Brown about it. Here's a carry, by the way, Western Carolina getting started. This is uh, Smiley McQueen, who came off a knee injury a year ago and is into the running game now for Coach Spear and the Catamounts. We were told we would see this redshirt freshman from Scotland County High School in southeastern North Carolina at Laurenburg today. But uh, the Carter-Williams thing is interesting because Phil Longo talks about Coach Robert Gillespie, the running back coach at Carolina, and how, you know, they just kind of weave these guys in and out, and the numbers end up very similar and comparable, Roddy, but there's no routine, no script to it, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't even matter who's in the game. Unless both of them are in together, which is even more dangerous than only having one. Well, you showed that in the open. Chaz Surratt, the tackle of Stanley, and that gets us to the end of quarter one in Chapel Hill. Well, number 17, North Carolina, has got a pair of rushing scores from Michael Carter and a Sam Howell touchdown pass to Antoine Green. 21-3 after 15 minutes. Harris, Alex Farmartino, our producer, Dennis Lanius, our director, our great ACC Network crew. Western Carolina takes over 
Well, they have it for third down at their 30 yard line, third and five, and the carry by McQueen. He got stacked up. Surratt Rolling led on the, the tackle parade progress for prior to Carolina. Possession. Fourth down. And it will be three and out here for the Catamounts. McQueen. Did he cough it up here? They did rule forward progress before the ball popped loose. And ball is out. Yeah, it was, a good, it was a good call there. I mean, he was stacked okay. up. His forward progress has been had been stopped, and that Carolina defense ripped it out, but I think it was a good call to call forward progress. So here is Brent Dickerson to punt it away again. And Newsom will run to the far sideline and watch it check up at the 25, and that's where it is downed by Calvin Jones. Quick reminder for you, ACC Network, Scott. Six undefeated teams in women's basketball triple header next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Start in Pittsburgh, the Panthers and Clemson at noon. Sam Ravich and Kelly Gramlich there, then number eight, NC State at County Forum against Boston College. Pam Ward, LaChana Robinson will finish it up with Beth Mowens and Christy Thomas Scuddy. Carolina, number five, Louisville, women's basketball and ACC Network a week from Sunday. Tar Heels off their 25. First possession of the second quarter. Howell spins it middle of the field. Here comes Newsom to the near side across the 40. Daz reroutes again and knocked out of bounds at the 41 yard line by Gavin. Howell's pass is complete to number five, Daz Newsom. First down, Tar. It's funny talking to Sam Howell about Daz Newsom. You see just his ability with the ball in his hands. Daz Newsom's the guy that's always open. Always comes back and says, hey, you should have thrown it to me. And he may have had three guys around him. But when you can do stuff like that, I tell you, I was always open too, Wes, if I was that dynamic. Here's another throw. Newsom in the slot. Got some help from Diami Brown on the block. Pushes it upfield toward the 50. Trevor Best Childers. Senior linebacker and Newsom will take a break. Well earned, I might add. <laughs> And we, we touched on it earlier, Wes. He came into this game with 40 receptions on the season, had 72 last year. And, and Phil Longo said, look, they are bracketing Daz Newsom all the time, so the, the production just hasn't been there. But he's done so much for this team this season, whether it's in the special teams game or just blocking for those running backs or, or, or making plays on screen passes. He's just been such an invaluable part of this offense. Deami Brown's gotten a little more of the catches this season, but Daz Newsom has certainly had a big impact still. Quick throw to Toe Groves and a first down for Carolina. Howell is 12 of 13 to start the ball game. And make it 13-14. And Groves hit the ground. Did the ball pop loose after he hit it? No, it's a fumble. So the junior from Nashville, Rontavius Groves, on the field is a catch coughs it up. By the defense. First down. And it looks like Western Carolina going to be the beneficiary on a play by A.J. Rogers. He's going to be, so certainly be reviewed, or at least looked at by the review booth. They're going to be looking for, did he have it long enough to be declared a catch? And then was he down before this ball came out? Let's see Curtis, Curtis Roach Wiesel. there who uh, recovered the fumble, the linebacker. Yeah, and, and Wes off the replay we saw, I think both of those are check marks. He, I think he had it long enough to be considered a catch and did not look like anything was close to being down. So off the 29-yard line, the Catamounts with a reverse and throw, and here is the tight end. This is Owen Kosinki down to the Carolina 31-yard line. Big throw to Kosinki, the tight end. From Reggie Jones. Gotta love it. Kasinki is lined up to the bottom. He just sneaks down there to make it look like it's run the other way. Then the reverse comes. He sneaks out. And it's a monster play for Western Carolina. 40 yard throw. And Kaysen Linky has Legal come to the ball game. Offense. Breaking the huddle with 12 in the in the huddle. True Five freshman from Mobile, yes, Alabama, who played at Mobile Christian. 
And we get our first look at Linky, by the way, who a year ago in high school at Mobile Christian threw for 2,000 yards and rushed for another 1,000, Roddy, playing for the uh, longtime former college football assistant, Alabama, and other stops for Ronnie Cottrell. So you heard the penalty on the 12 men in the huddle. So the ball at the 36 here for the Catamounts after the Tar Heel fumble. And this is Linky working down to the 34 for a couple of years. Linko, the quarterback keeper, he had two on the play. So Lincoln picks up a couple, and we expect to see not only this youngster quarterback, but also perhaps another true freshman as well for Mark Spear. This is where, Roddy, you touched on this. This is where the kind of the preseason aspect of this works, right? This is yeah, the absolutely. last game before late February. Uh, absolutely. They, they were going to play two quarterbacks in this game no matter what. And Mark Spears said, look, you, you got to evaluate these guys against live reps when you have the opportunity. That ball is fumbled on the give to Stanley. But I think he was able to get back on it and was for the Catamounts. Just a bobbled exchange here. I don't know if Linker let go of the ball a little too soon or Stanley didn't right. squeeze on it, but either way, the ball ends up on the ground, Marisha. When we were talking to head coach Mark Spear, he said that was one of the things that he was going to be looking for, like you said, during this game. You know, uh, are you productive? Are you winning those individual battles? When they watch back the film, they want to see that because, like you said, it's an evaluation game. So here's the third and 15 play. Lincoln eludes the rush and will work his way back upfield and then slip down at the 35. Fourth down coming for the Catamounts. I think he tripped over his own guy, Wes. Got close to the feet of one of his offensive linemen. Looked like he got a little tangled up, but it's a nice little slippery move in the backfield to make a couple of guys miss. I thought he might be able to find some open space and potentially get the first down doesn't happen as he gets tripped up by one of his own guys. Tyrone Hopper got a hand in there for the Tar Heels. And Carolina looks like they're keeping their defense on the field here for fourth and 13. And a short punt. And that will be fielded by Larisha Harris, West Durham. Game one of our ACC Network triple header. And Michael Carter going to work around the edge. And he'll get eight to the 20 before Ty Harris, the leading tackler on the Catamount squad, the linebacker from Decula, Georgia, makes the tackle, Arisha. Yeah, when we were talking to offensive coordinator Phil Longo, he told us that Michael Carter is just a super positive and energetic individual. Yeah, no doubt about that. And here is the uh, carry for Carter. Four more, Larisha. Go ahead. I wanted to talk about this story really quickly because it was just really awesome and just really shows the type of guy that Michael Carter is. Coach Longo said one day he was really down. His daughter had dealt with a diabetic emergency and he saw Michael Carter and it just made him right. He says he's a person that he goes to see before every practice, every game, because Michael Carter just has that positivity to get him right and in a great mood. Roddy, not often the coach says he goes to the player for the get right. You're exactly right, and, and having spoken to Michael Carter before, I know he's been on the show as well, I believe. Uh, he is, like, he is a magnetic personality. He's just always smiling, always comes to work, absolutely loves football, and, and you love to see him have this type of day, especially on senior day. Sam Howell cuts it loose and up the ladder to make the catch. Emory Simmons, and he will finally be pushed out of bounds near the 45-yard line. Another acrobatic catch from Emory Simmons. Emory Simmons has exploded on the scene, it seems like. Obviously, he had the fantastic catch against Notre Dame a week ago. But this is a guy who's kind of going to be the heir apparent next year. Deami Brown's got a decision to make. Daz Newsom will not be back. Emory Simmons is going to step into that void, and he'll be in good hands. Here's Javante Williams in the open field. Williams inside the 30 to the 24. Just gliding along goes Williams with a nice throw from Powell to set it up. West, there's four backs in the country that have 800 yards rushing and 200 receiving. North Carolina's got two of them, and you see why right then. Just so dangerous with the ball in their hands. They've 
both got great hands and great feel in the open field. Deami Brown slices inside the 10, first and goal for Carolina. And after being frustrated the last two and a half quarters, I'd say, against Notre Dame, I mean, this North Carolina offense first picked up right where it left off prior to that. And you would expect that in a game against a team in, in, with Western Carolina. That, that's obviously overmatched from a physical standpoint, but the sharpness is something that timeout. you have to worry Western coming Carolina. off of a tough loss. Second, second time out of the half. Catamount's going to burn timeout. a timeout. Their second will step aside as well. Just under seven to go, first half. Tar Heels threatening again. Here's Sam Howell and the Tar Heels now first and goal inside the 10 out of the Catamounts timeout. And Javante Williams will get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a step more. And that's Ty Harris, the linebacker, with the stop. Curtis Roach, number 33, on the tackle for Western Carolina. Andy McCollum, very complimentary of his linebacker, the senior from Decula, Ty Harris. What he's been able to do in a couple ball games, leading Western Carolina in tackles. Excited about what he'll bring to the table for them when they get into Southern Conference play in February. Here's how pressure coming to his right and overthrows Simmons. Western Carolina both brought pressure off both ends. They're able to get to Sam Howell, make him uncomfortable. And Curtis Roach. Yeah, today's one of those days where, where if you're a North Carolina fan, you just cringe anytime anybody gets in the area code of Sam Howell. Right. Spear not happy at all with Gary Patterson, the referee. He was looking at that card, and as it was noted in the truck, he is not checking lottery numbers, and he is no, no. certainly expressing some displeasure with something that happened on that one. Yep, here's third and goal. Howell cuts it loose into traffic. Williams comes up with the catch, I believe. It is ruled a catch at the three-yard line. Fourth and goal for the Tar Heels. How often do you see a running back making a diving catch going over the middle? And looks like North Carolina is going to leave the offense on the field. Give those guys some experience in a pressure situation. Fourth and three. Maybe an opportunity to work on a two-point play as well. This is kind of the area where you'd run that. See what they go with. So here's Howell. A couple of tight ends. Walston and Morales both in the package here. They're going to hand the ball. Javante Williams scores easily. Javante Williams, touchdown, Carolina. Why do anything fancy when zone up the middle has been the way that you've been able to score on the ground? Another couple of in the other couple of drives. Saw Marcus McKeith and Brian Anderson doing work up the middle. Jordan Tucker sealing off the edge. Javante Williams gets on the board. Can't let Michael Carter have all the fun today. Yeah. And the kick is good from Atkins. Javante Williams making it look easy in Chapel Hill. And we'll hold Carolina. off on our That's their first timeout. Morning. Sideline warning on Carolina, I guess. And we will take a timeout. Five and a half to play. 28-3 Tar Heels. Exit Carolina, Javante Williams just broke a tie at three with Mike Voigt, who was the ACC Player of the Year in 1976, and Kelvin Bryant. Roddy, who, by the way, was the MVP of the Philadelphia Stars in the USFL the first year they had a championship game, by the way. Um, here's the kick. No return for Western Carolina. You, and, and by the way, it also gives us an opportunity to show you one of the great players in Carolina history, and this is number 23, Don McCauley. Huntington Station, New York. He broke O.J. Simpson's NCAA rushing record. You see him score against Clemson, Wake Forest. This is Virginia. But, Roddy, his final game as a Tar Heel against Duke. 47 carries, 279 yards. 1,720 yards, top OJ, 1,709 from 1968. Man.
Is that getting it done, by the way? Just pretty, checking. Pretty impressive. 47 totes? Like, when's the last time when's the last time you saw a guy have 47 carries? I mean, that, that's, that's, the, that's the number that stood out to me. They don't make running backs like they used to, Wes. Uh, the touchdown mark, by the way, five that day against Duke in his final bow as a senior, stood until Kelvin Bryant scored six against East Carolina. And there's a whole other story about that that we don't have nearly enough time for today. Uh, we, we might at some point. Ball at the 28. Lenka got three on the carry. And they run it right back. And this is uh, Smiley McQueen, the young freshman, uh, Richard freshman, who was playing last year, had 89 yards on 21 carries at the start of his rookie campaign before a knee injury took him out. And this is uh, he and Stanley and Bradley, all guys that they were interested to see today in the Western Carolina ground attack to help Donovan Spencer once they get back to a regular schedule in the fall or in the spring round. Don't think you slipped that Philadelphia Stars reference by me once. I caught that one too. Yeah, he was the MVP of the regular season with Bryant. They lost to the Michigan Panthers in the first ever title game. Here's the throw on the perimeter, and this is Calvin Jones making the grab. Sixth catch of the year for Jones, who had four catches in the loss at East Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. Roddy, in Mark Spears' case, it's 28-3. You're having a hard time stopping Carolina. The only time Carolina's been stopped is when they fumbled the ball. The idea here for Spear, though, you've got to be able to take something into that locker room to build on for half two to, to get value out of this, or as Larisha talked about, the, the process he wants to go through with this team, not just now, but once they get back into fall or in spring football in the, uh, in the month of February. Yeah, and, and his offense has moved the ball in this first half. I mean, they've had a couple of drops that have stopped some drives. But offensively, 136 yards so far, and they found some success both on the offensive line and out on the perimeter. So I think that's the thing you build off of. You go in and you say, hey, look, guys, we were looking to win some individual battles, as Larisha said. And we've done that, especially on the offensive side of the football. So I think, I think Mark Spear will be pleased with how his offense has performed. On the whole, little things here and there are keeping them from putting the ball in the end zone. Jeremiah Gibble the tackle a moment ago, second and five. And they're going to hand it to McQueen again. The ball is out. And scramble for it. Carolina promptly says they've recovered it. And they have. Tar, Tar Heels come out of there. Kevin Hester who only played one year of high school football at North Cobb outside of Atlanta after Kelly knocked it loose. And McQueen frustrated. The timeout on the field, Western Carolina's first turnover. The women's hoops Thursday night, we got a double header for you. Starting Winston-Salem. Wake Forest hosts North Carolina. Jen Hildreth and Kelly Gramlich will be there. And then Syracuse, Quentin Hillsman's team in South Florida to meet Katie Myers, Miami squad. Debbie Antonelli, Beth Mullins on our coverage on ACC Network. Here's Daz Newsom back to work. He's had a very, very busy first half for the Tar Heels, Roddy. Well, Longo told us that over these last few games, we're going to get our best players the ball. We're going to do it a ton. And I took that as, hey, Des Newsom's going to be heavily involved in what we're going to see over the next few games. And that certainly has been the case here today. 15 yards, first down for Carolina. Tar Heels will have the ball to start second half. Maybe trying to add one going to the locker room for Mac Brown. Quick throw, batted down. Nice play. Defensive end, Nigel Mann. That's a Fast freshman from 40 Peach for County for High School. Nigel Manns. And Byron, Georgia. Nice play there against Sam Howell. And defensive coordinator Andy McCollum told us Nigel Mann and some of these other young players, he's really excited about what they can bring and, and loves the experience that they're getting before things start going for real in Southern Conference play. 
Howell, the pump, the throw, Walston, the catch, inside the 15. Howell's pass is complete to number 84. Darren Garrett Walston. Walston. Another catch in the throw the game against the corner line. gathers. First down, Tar. Let's see what happens. Sam Howell does the fake and then throws it. Ooh, a little low hit. I'm telling you, this is one of those games, Wes, where every time it happens, just a little bit of a cringe because you're certainly up. And then, obviously, earlier this year, we had the Charles Snowden injury against right. Abilene Christian. It's just, you want to get everybody out healthy. Another throw, Howell, this time to Newsom. First and goal for Carolina here with 146 and counting in the opening frame. Four possessions, or four touchdowns, five possessions for Carolina so far. Carter's the running back with Howell here on the first and goal. And Michael Carter easily into the end zone for his third rushing score of the half. Another inside zone play, Wes. I think all four of their rushing touchdowns have been some version of this. Look at the block by Garrett Walston up at the top, cutting down the backside. Michael Carter once again easily gets into the end zone and keeps the train rolling for North Carolina. Atkins to add the point. Cleanly through, 35 to three. Just over a minute and a half to go after Carter's third run. Coming up at the half, Jordan Cornett in studio with uh, Coach Rick, Eric McLean. They'll be covering not only the details of this first half, but also a look ahead to Boston College, Virginia, Georgia Tech, NC State, over in Raleigh, and then Duke, Miami tonight. And Wallace Wade in Durham as well. So stay tuned. Ghost guys come up at the break. Back round, Phil Longo got to be pretty happy here, Roddy. It's been very businesslike, as uh, as we thought it might be. They're very efficient and uh, businesslike, I think, is a good way to describe it. I think they're now talking about the fact that it's time for Sam Howell to exit stage left. Who else are they going to work in? But this is a, exactly what they imagined when coming into this game. Return back to the 25 for Jones. Mark Spears got one timeout remaining for the final 91 seconds of this first half of play. Linka will continue to be the quarterback here. We saw Will Jones start the ball game. Case and Linka, the freshman has been on since, and we may see Kate Snobberly as well before the afternoon's done. But a real good chance for Coach Spear and Don Holt, his offensive coordinator, to get a look here at this young freshman. Here is Spencer, and he is pulled down to Espahasik. Roddy, you asked Jay Bateman about Ray Bahasic and Mac Brown yesterday, and those are the kind of plays Carolina fans have come to see in this fall. Being a nose tackle, Ray Bahasic does not get the credit North that Carolina, I think he deserves for his half. impact on the defense. Jay Bateman said, look, when we played the run well, it's because Bahasic has played well. He's a guy that pops up the middle as a disruptive force. I think as he continues to get stronger, and that was something that, that Jay Bateman talked about this offseason. He got stronger, and as he gets stronger, he's going to be a really, really good player next year. Yeah, don't forget, this is game one of our triple header here on ACC Network. Coming up, Georgia Tech, NC State, and Raleigh, presented by Dr. Pepper. Jeff Sims and the Jackets. The Wolfpack have won three straight and today try to win an ACC best seventh game, Roddy. NC State's never won seven conference games in a campaign and then tonight over in Durham De'Eric King and the Canes against the Blue Devils presented by Geico as well here on ACC Network. I haven't seen De'Eric King in a while but fantastic season and a fantastic impact for him on that Miami program. And knocked out of bounds by Renee is Spencer but King also Roddy time to time gets lost in the conversation about quarterbacks in this league. 
Yeah, and that's what happens. You know, we were talking before coming on. It's sort of out of sight, out of mind, both from the college football playoff committee standpoint, from us, you know, Manny Diaz in that coach of the year conversation, Derek King and the conversation of best quarterbacks in the ACC. When you haven't played in a couple weeks, you kind of fall out of those conversations. So it's a good opportunity for them to come out and make a statement. Third down here for Western Carolina. Carolina's still got two timeouts. Lincoln trying to break free, and I think Bohasic got him around the legs and then waited on some mates to show up. Kimmel was there. North Carolina. That's their second so timeout. So there's the second timeout. Chad second Surratt timeout. also involved in it. So two plays by the big nose guard. And with a minute six to go, Carolina will have a timeout and wait on a catamount punt. Coming up at the half, a look ahead to tonight's primetime matchup over on ABC with number three Clemson and Virginia Tech. Roddy, the Tigers getting somewhat healthier, although Dabo Sweeney said the safety Landon Sanders will not be back until the postseason. Everyone else will trying to get back into the lineup for Clemson here in the next couple of weeks. James Skalski's pitch count will continue to rise. He's going to play more in that game. So we're starting to see sort of the crescendo of the season happening towards that rematch, the potential rematch, I guess we have to say right now, to be journalistically correct, the potential rematch between Clemson and Notre Dame. Tigers need a win in Blacksburg to meet Notre Dame in Charlotte. Dickerson's punt toward Daz Newsom. And it will go out of bounds. And it will be awarded to Carolina. There's a flag There's a down on the play. play. And a punt way, way back up the field. And Gary Patterson has got to sort out the punt. And the flag here. That punt was measured out of bounds at the Western Carolina 35-yard line. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughing, number 27, receiving team. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down, North Carolina. So the Tar Heels will back themselves up there on the penalty here with a minute to go. Michael Carter's had a sensational first half for North Carolina. You know the uh, three rushing scores on eight carries, Ronnie. But he's also been really electric just in the open field. Well, and, and that's who he's been his entire career in North Carolina. Had a thousand yards a year ago. He will likely have to get to that mark again this year. A guy that's already accepted an invitation to the Senior Bowl. And, and when he's there, he is going to blow it up because of his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, make people miss in the open field. But from the interview process standpoint and interacting with these pro coaches, he is going to be a joy for these guys to be around. Brown, his first catch of the day, Brown. a laser from Sam Howell. Falls up the 26 yard line. Gets the Tar Heel drive. 24 yards to the Western Carolina 26. Yeah, no. It was a nine-yard punt for Western Carolina, 15 yards tacked on to the end of that, put North Carolina at the 50, and it gives Sam Howell an opportunity in live reps to go through a two-minute drill. Yep. 55 seconds left. Tar Heels with a timeout. Howell looks. Going to loop for the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Carolina. Number five, and Daz Newsom. Newsom. Touchdown, Carolina. Wes, Mac Brown called a timeout to give his team this opportunity to go through because you don't get these live situations in situational football often. When you do, you have to give your quarterback and your team an opportunity to go through it. This is about as well as they could have imagined, a two-play 50-yard drive that ends in a 26-yard strike to Daz Newsom. Six touchdowns in seven first-half possessions for Carolina. And here is Atkins for the point. 42 to 3. And Powell continues to move up the career passing list in touchdowns. Now tied for second in Target history with Brent Renner. 
we saw Bryn Renner live and in person. That was a really good player, but Sam Howell's going to rewrite the record books. See Daz Newsom goes inside like he's going to run either a seam or a post, comes back out to the corner. He is wide open. Sam Howell shows you why he's one of the best in the country. Daz Newsom having an explosive day on senior night as well. 20 of 23, 287, two touchdowns here for Howell. Newsom, six catches, 82 yards and a touchdown. Targeted six times and the six catches. No return off the kick by Carolina. So with 49 seconds left, Tar Heels also get the ball to start the second half. And Roddy, this may be playing out in some respects where Phil Longo and Jay Bateman, the offensive and defensive coordinators for Carolina, respectively, talking to us yesterday about an opportunity to see some guys for longer looks next week or longer looks this Saturday as they kind of look at the back end of what could be a very interesting offseason as it relates to college football. I mean, they've already kind of determined that a couple guys are going to come back who are seniors and will play that extra year, if you will. There's a play of about five yards for Western Carolina. Like a Coach, on the carry to the Coach Brown yard talked line. this week about Tyrone Hopper's going to come back, Grayson Atkins, Bo Corrales, who's been injury plagued this year as well. He's a senior. Atkins, a grad student. He, they're going to bring him back, the kicker we've seen here. Uh, all sorts of guys. And that's part of this college football season I don't think many folks are thinking about right now because they're enjoying the games. But that extra year that was awarded by the NCAA is going to come into play for some programs. Yeah, and you're going to have to figure out how many seniors do you allow to come back because you're obviously going to have to pay for those guys. And also, you're going to have to figure out from a scholarship standpoint how you stay under the NCAA's number for the next year. Yep. Caleb Ferguson's carry ends this first half. But North Carolina, six touchdowns in seven possessions. Michael Carter's got three on the ground. Sam Howell's thrown two touchdowns, one to Antoine Green, another one to Daz Newsom, and Javante Williams has a three-yard touchdown run. So in many respects, the Tar Heels stick to the script and look impressive. And we'll get the ball to start the second half as well. And here's Larissa. The character is because we can go look at that scoreboard. Will we go fight? Will we go play hard? And will we play for our brothers and, and, and love each other and go, go finish this game? Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. And the Tar Heels with the kick to start the second half. And North Carolina with Toe Groves back out across the 30 toward the 33-yard line. And great to spend a ACC football Saturday with Roddy Jones. And let's see kind of where Carolina goes here. We know we're going to see the uh, freshman from Merleton, Arkansas, and that is uh, Jacoby Criswell here in the second half for sure, Roddy. Yeah, you see Jace Reuter there who is also in the running. We'll likely see him. There's Jacoby Criswell, who's the player of the year, Gatorade player of the year in Arkansas. And, and Phil Longo's excited about this guy. He was excited to get him some live reps in game situations. So he's as good as a thrower of the football and as good an athlete as he's had at the quarterback position. Javante Williams is the running back, and he'll break free here. Williams almost to the 44-yard line, but the this six-foot and a quarter-inch tall freshman Criswell has only thrown uh, one ball on the year, and he has four carries for 20 yards, but... He was the number 11 dual threat guy coming out of Arkansas a year ago, and he's got some numbers to back it up in his high school career. Didn't see anything there, and we'll keep it on the ground. It's right midfield on the second snap of the half here for Jacoby Criswell. Tackle made by uh, John Johnson of the defensive line for the Cowboys. Well, this is really valuable experience for Jacoby Criswell. Being behind Sam, Car Sam Howell, excuse me, you don't get a lot of opportunities to, to get in ball games, but the development of that backup spot is so valuable. I mean, we see it across college football every single season. Guys could go down. This is really big. Intercepted, picked off, and this is Ronald Kent taking it all the way back for the Catamount touchdown. 
There is a flag on the play. And Kent really upset here. During the return, personal foul, legal blindside block, number three, Western Carolina. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First and 10, Western Carolina. Darius Smith is ticketed for the penalty, but great play by Ronald Kent. Wes, this was a, an out route, and Kent just jumps it. And you saw Darius Smith at the end coming in and hitting the North Carolina receiver. That is, I mean, if you're Mark Spear, that's one of those that you get laid into uh, in film because it's a completely unnecessary block. It had nothing to do with the play. Ronald Kent was going to stroll into the end zone no matter what. You see Criswell getting some tips from Sam Howell, telling him what he saw on that play. So Western Carolina takes over at North Carolina's 49. And we get another change at quarterback for the Catamounts as well. There's Donovan Spencer as Will Jones has come back to start this third period. And second half for Coach Spear. There's the redshirt junior from Greensboro who split ties with Case and Lincoln in the first half. Will Jones had some success, especially in the run game. We saw the speed option right there. Had some success with the zone reads earlier, too. And this is Spencer again trying to get to the backside of the play, and that's the freshman Desmond Evans Spencer chasing the Evans on the Spencer tackle. now. Spencer now. Look at the bottom of your screen. Ronald Kent just sits on the route and undercuts it. That ball's thrown a little inside. But Jacoby Criswell stares that way the entire time, and Kent reads it like a book. for the scenario for Western Carolina here. You see two of eight today. And Jones empties the backfield. Quick throw and the catch is made. And that is Spencer. Will Jones pass is complete to number 20. Grabbing the ball Spencer. at the 35 and that'll be enough for a catamount first down. Roddy, I kind of like what uh, John Holt and uh, Mark Spear doing with Donovan Spencer here today. Yeah, I do too. You know, they've gotten him involved some in the pass game, had a drop earlier, but but guys, they've gotten him involved in the pass game. They've run with him some. They had some success early in the game with the zone plays. All in all, Mark Spear's got to be pleased with his offense. Certainly not pleased with the fumble, but his offense has moved the ball some here today. Yep. Spencer stays in the ball game with Jones. And another carry for Donovan Spencer. Breaks free inside the 20. Good hard running by the fifth-year senior from Charlotte. Tackle made by Trey Morrison out of the Tar Heels secondary. 15-yard line, first and 10 for Western Carolina on a red zone trip. Well, Mac Brown said that he was not pleased with his defense's job in the run game early in the game. They sort of settled down. Well, in the second half, it looks like it did to start the game with Western Carolina having success, success running the ball up the middle. So Donovan Spencer just shy of 50 yards on the afternoon. And that time he got hit right in the hole. Desmond Evans was there. Eugene Asante. Two young guys, they are incredibly excited about in Chapel Hill. Yeah, when, you, when you're talking about replacing Chaz Surratt next year, Eugene Asante is going to be in, in the mix to do that. So, again, the reps that you get in games like this kind of give you a leg up going into the spring. Eugene Asante has been a guy that's played some, but when you're behind Jeremiah Gimmel and Chaz Surratt, it's not often that you're getting in the game in the middle of the third quarter. So here's second down and 10. Another option look from Jones. He'll pitch to Spencer, and Carolina hemmed it up pretty well. Patrice Renee was the Tar Heel that got a helmet in there from the secondary. Yeah, Renee was a little shaken up. You're going to see. You saw the hit there. He kind of staggered when he got up. He's come off the field now. Got his helmet off. So we're going to take a look at him. 
Chris Conley has come in the ball game now for Carolina. He wears zero on defense. And now third down and eight for Western Carolina. And again, they slide it. Forward to Donovan Spencer. And it'll be fourth down coming up. And Patrice Rene, the senior from Ottawa, Ontario, playing in his final game at Kenyon Stadium into the medical tent. And you hope to see Patrice Rene come back into this game, obviously. But, but if he does not, and this has been his final game, I mean, Jay Bateman just raved about the leadership that he's provided to that secondary room and also said that playing Canada for about a million years if he wants to. 26-yard <laughs> try here for Richard McCollum, and it's a fake. Catamount's going to throw for the end zone, and incomplete. Cade Snotherly, the third quarterback on the roster, was looking for Clayton Bardall in the end zone and overthrew him incomplete on the fake field goal. Josh Henderson is coming to backfield now with Jacoby Criswell, by the way, at the running back position. And here is Henderson going to work on his first carry. And picks up the better part of five as Carolina starts from its nine. Roman Johnson was the first guy in a purple helmet to greet Josh Henderson. Pennington, New Jersey, just his eighth carry of the year. And Patrice Rene out of the medical tent for the Tar Heels. And a yard or two there for Henderson on second down, Larissa. Well, you guys were talking about Patrice, Patrice Rene when I spoke with Tony Grimes and was just asking him, you know, who was the person, you know, when you came in that took you under his wing and he mentioned Patrice Rene served as a go-to guy for him. Uh, he was very informative, helped him out a lot, says he's an OG on the defense and he'll be remembered as the father of the roots. <laughs> well, and it goes back to a Dre Bly influence. As you see, third down play for Carolina, just the uh, third, third down of the day for the Tar Heels. Trey Bly apparently has gone rude boys with the Tar Heels secondary, Roddy. I know that's shocking. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you have a group like the DBs, like those guys always have to have some sort of identity. You know, they got to they got to have their own thing going. And uh, Trey Bly is a good one to learn from if you're any of those DBs here at Carolina. Ben, ben Karen into punt. Young man from Ireland averaging about 44 yards a punt. Daquan Patton deep for Western Carolina. And will signal for and make the fair catch at the 43. Timeout in Chapel Hill. Back to Chapel Hill. Let's check with Larisha. Well, before the half, I was able to ask Coach Mac Brown about uh, his daughter being a part of Jeopardy. And he told me that he was just so elated and excited for her because she overcame so much. She is actually a cancer survivor. She's a mother. She's a wife. And for her to be able to just be selected among hundreds to participate in such a wonderful game as Jeopardy, he was just extremely excited for her and said, regardless of what happened, you are a winner. And in fact, she was the winner. And um, Roddy West, we want to ask you the question that she actually won on. <laughs> Wes, I hope you got the answer, man, because you're getting no help from over here. I can promise you that. Well, you're the one with two degrees from Georgia Tech. <laughs> here, is, here is Jones, a long throw on the perimeter. And uh, catch made by Daquan Patton. Okay, Larissa, here we go. Do we have to answer in the form of a question, by the way? Yes. You, oh, look at this. You have to answer it the same way you would on Jeopardy. Okay, here it is. What's now this nation resisted naval sieges by the Berbers in 1429, the Ottomans in 1565, and Axis World War II air assaults? Roddy? Uh... The answer Remember must in be the in the form of a question. Of a question. Yes. What, what is, I don't know, man. I, what is, what is Hawaii? That's not a nation, so I'm already <laughs> out. I don't know. What is Australia? 
That wouldn't have been World War II. I got no idea, Wes. I got nothing for you. What, what is Cyprus? Is... Good try. What is Malta? Malta. Gone. What is Malta? Next guess? A huge flex on her part for winning with that question. I just went with something I knew was old and near the Mediterranean. Because <laughs> that was where World War II was... Yeah. Look, uh, Roddy went with Australia the, just in case you folks needed a <laughs> continent. It's also a country. <laughs> you, you, you put me on the spot with the, with the island nation thing. Like I couldn't, I couldn't come up with any island nation. By the way, off the top of my head. Larissa, can I add very quickly? How about Mac flexing back to you that Catherine missed Lambeau Field and he was upset about that? So right. <laughs> He's like, come on, you've been around football all your life. How could you not get that one, Lambeau Field? That's the well, answer. All right. You know what? Congratulations to Catherine. I know Mike and Sally are delighted for her. Barbara, her sister, great family. Uh, and an extended family with Mike and Sally. And uh, boy, they're so proud of their entire group. And should be. But that is just a, a wonderful story. Thank you, Larisha, for that. Here is Donovan Spencer making the play to midfield. I'm sorry, Larisha, go ahead. No worries, Wes. The other two opponents actually guessed your answer, Cypress. So. <laughs> You're in good company, You, you get credit. You get credit for that one. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the other the other away thing, from the history minor, Roddy, at Elon. Yeah, there you go. The other, the other really cool thing that, that Matt Brown mentioned when we talked to him about it was the fact that Catherine got to participate with Alex, Alex Trebek yeah. in, in what came to be some of his last days before he succumbed to his battle with cancer as well. So um, it, was, uh, it was obviously something that was very special to him and his family. Yep. Here is Jones cutting it loose on fourth down, overthrown and almost picked on the back end by Giovanni Biggers. And we will take a timeout. Five and change to go. Tar Heels in front. Stadium, Capitol Hill, North Carolina, 42, Western Carolina, three. Larissa, can you get somebody to straighten me up, by the way, over there in the seats? Jacoby Criswell's third series of work. And the first down give is DJ Jones. Freshman from Pine Forest in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Eighth carry of the year for Jones. Another one of these running backs, Elijah Green, Josh Henderson, DJ Jones, British Brooks. All guys that uh, they were interested in seeing today if possible. Out in the flat. Here's the catch for Toe Groves, and he'll turn the corner, be near a first down. Pushed out of bounds by L.A. Rogers Kobe Anderson. Transfer from Western Toe Kentucky Groves. to the Catamount program. Five on the play. Wes, you mentioned uh, this North Carolina Push coaching staff five. wanting to get a look uh, at these Rogers running backs. I, I think they are they are very aware, obviously, of the fact that they may have to replace that whole running, all the production that they've yeah. gotten from the running back position with. Michael Carter obviously being a senior, going to the Senior Bowl, he will not be back. Javante Williams is a junior whose stock has been rising all season. So getting a look at some of these guys is gonna be important. Here's Criswell on third and two. Tackled by Curtis Roach. Quarterback keeper, eight of three on the play. Ball's going to be 39. First down, Tar. So Carolina will have the first down with Criswell. And Curtis Roach. Junior red shirt from Cumming, Georgia, awarded a scholarship in the offseason by Mark Spear and his dad, Kirk Roach, Hall of Famer at Western Carolina. Roddy, as a place kicker, 71 career field goals for Kirk Roach, by the way, in his days as a catamount. Criswell going to cut it loose deep for the end zone and broke it up on the way for Antoine Green. There is a marker down around the end zone line. Pass interference, defense, number two, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. That'll give Carolina a first down. Quick finish on the Roach number. Here's the look, by the way, on the ball for Green. Yeah, pretty, pretty obvious pass interference on that one. When you swipe the hand before the ball gets there. That's, that's, by the way, uh, Kirk Roach. First down. Roddy still has the Southern Conference record for the longest field goal. He's been tied now, but he kicked two 57-yard field goals back in 1987. 
There's Criswell on the first down keep for a yard. The quarterback keeper for the Tar Heels. As we go inside three and a half to play oh, quarter three. No gain. no gain on the play. I mean, we've seen guys kick field goals this year, but two of them from 57 in the late 80s. Yeah. And 71 field goals, though. You know, some some of that is playing a lot. Some of that's that's a lot of stalling and plus territory by the offense there too. <laughs> 71 career field goals, 24 of them in 1987. Second down to 10 for Criswell. And Jacoby spins it right in the middle of the field, and that's Kamari Morales. The tight end, Larisha, picks up the first down. You guys were talking about Curtis Roach and his dad. Well, I asked him, how, how is it knowing that your dad is there at the school and he's a Hall of Famer? Well, he told me when he arrived at Western, he tried not to tell anybody about his father because he wanted to create his own image, his own legacy. But after a while, it was just inevitable. And he was actually happy to know that he could look up and see his dad sort of watching over him as he practiced and played. Yeah, great story. Inside give, spinning toward the end zone is Jones. DJ Jones on the carry. And he'll be brought down at the one. Rogers Anderson on the tackle for the Catamounts. 12 yard run for DJ Jones. Puts oh, Carolina on the doorstep. The offensive line still hard. doing work no matter who's in the backfield. North Carolina is on the doorstep. And we get a whistle. There is a flag and on the procedure. Play. On Drive Carolina. Ball start, number 76, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. First down. Yes. No, we'll look at DJ Jones here, Ronnie, because here's the future right in front of you in some respect. After the yeah, former wide right receiver, a guy that moved to running line. back late in his high school career. Nice run there. You know, the, the thing that's going to be hardest to replace is, is just the, the Carter Williams, if both of them do indeed go, because Javante Williams obviously has not declared yet. The, the, the Just their ability to make people miss in the open field, that's what we're going to be looking for out of these backs. Jones lowered the shoulder that time on Ty Harris, linebacker. Second down coming up. Well, you look at Jones, Josh Henderson is a sophomore. He's 210 pounds. Elijah Green is a 200-pound freshman. Plus, the recruiting has gone very well in Chapel Hill, reportedly. Some of that was marked on the defensive side last year. Here's Criswell on a keeper. Spins, tries to reach for the end zone. The ball popped loose. And a scramble for it after the hit by Harris on Criswell, and it will stay with the Tar Heels for third down. Well, it, it so far has not been the appearance for Jacoby Criswell that, that I think you would have imagined and through the pick that should have been a pick six. And this one, there's just no need to reach the ball out there unless you are sure you're going to get it across the end zone because it obviously could come out and did there. Third down and goal. And this is Jones finding a seam for the Carolina DJ touchdown. Jones, touchdown Carolina. DJ Jones, first Tar Heel touchdown. And, and it's really cool to, to see guys like DJ Jones who have been practicing all season be able to get their first touchdowns. You know, I, I was I, I remember games like these, West, where you're able to get a comfortable lead and you start to see some of these some of those young guys make their way in. See the team, his teammates really excited for him getting his first touchdown at the college level. And now the point. And with 18 seconds left to go in this third period, new score, Carolina 49, Western Carolina 3. Well, Wes, this is my favorite time of our broadcast, the time where I get to tell our fans <laughs> you can get the latest news and information from the ACC each morning with special guests from the world of sports, Packer and Durham, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern time on ACCN and the ESPN app.
And that's the combination you can see on Fridays. Fridays are the day to tune in. Uh, you, this Friday, we got Mike Tirico for two segments. We left a cliffhanger on the first one, and then you got Mike Tirico again. I usually pop up there. Wes, someone does need to straighten you up. It looks like, looks like, uh, Oh. It's like you may be leaning a little too much. We need to, we need to check. We may need to, we need to call my man. Your, call my man, to, James Sperling, or maybe our spotter Eric Fiddleman can run down there during the break and see if he can tidy me up a little bit. Good looking yeah, picture, though. I like the picture. <laughs> that ball is going to check at the goal line and then fielded off the bounce, and Reggie Jones. Thank you, Larissa. Larissa, can you help me out? Bless your heart. Look at her. She's doing the more you can do. There you go. There you go. That's Thank you, perfect. Larissa. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, nice work. Thank you, Larissa. I don't, I don't think my head's ever looked bigger. <laughs> we haven't even asked Larissa about the picture yet. You know, we've, we've, we've actually... You know, done a good job just letting that stand, right? She 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 expressed to us early on that that was uh, <laughs> that was not ideal. It was not, it was not the not. one she would have chosen. It was not, not, not the one photo. I would have chosen. Okay, very good. After the nine play drive, Catamounts will wind out the third quarter clock on a carry by Stanley. So we go to the fourth in Chapel Hill. Number 17, North Carolina, continuing to dominate. Catamounts threatened. Fake field goal went awry. Jacoby Criswell turned it over, but DJ Jones gets his first Tar Heel touchdown in the third. Back after this. And their third meeting all the time with Western Carolina leads 49 to three. Will Jones starts the fourth with a shot to Bardall, the tight end. Will Jones yeah, that'll be enough for the first down. Took a big shot on the Here's back end of that. Play ball spot at the 32. Shaking his head a little bit. See him pop up. And, and look, I think, I think if you're a Western Carolina fan, you have to be really excited about the way the team has competed, especially offensively throughout this game. Jay Bateman's going to have a lot to coach up with his defense. Yep. Give inside, and that is Makai Stanley from Wilmington, North Carolina, on the carry. Tackle made by Codry Jackson. Five on the play, ball spotted at the 37-yard line. We were talking earlier in the week about just just how this UNC defense is shaped up this season. I think the big thing is they are they are so young on defense, particularly on the back end. There's a lot of reasons to be excited. You got a shot there at Miles Murphy, number 88, and Clyde Pender, number 55. I mean, Jay Bateman said, look, when those two dudes are in the game, they look like potential NFL dudes with their size as true freshmen. So there's a lot of reason to be excited about this defense going forward. Bit of a reset with two receivers and straight ahead Stanley. And he'll get to the 40 on second and five. Asante was the first guy there from Carolina. Eugene Asante on the tackle, gain a free on the play. Stanley's got the kind of size at 6'2", 235, Roddy, that he can make you want to get in 22 personnel and run. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how Mark Spear and John Holt set up in the meeting room and get on the whiteboard, but I can tell you this, if Makai Stanley walked in the room at 6'2", 235, and I had a... 235 and 240 pound tight end like he does in Cullowee, I'd line up and go 22 personnel here, right? Yeah, and then you, you throw in the six foot four, 220 pound quarterback, and yeah. that quarterback run game becomes even more menacing. There's a quick throw, Bartall again, or no, that's Kosicki, 84. The Will Jones pass is complete to one of the two tight ends. Oh, and Kosicki is a senior in this program at six catches on the season coming in. Godfrey Jackson on the tackle for the Tar Heels. Eight of four on the play. Ball's so about the 44 first and yard line for the Catamounts. Tight end room for, for Western Carolina is one that they, that they like a lot. And in the Southern Conference, I mean, that that's going to be one of the things that they rely on heavily. Pistol set again on first and 10. And Stanley will keep and get hit right away 
at the uh, line of scrimmage. Well, Tuesday night on ESPN, another edition of the college football playoff ranking show. And here is our able analyst latest predictions. See, what he I, sees on New Year's Day, perhaps. Th this is this is the way I see it right now. I, I would have had Florida for Texas A&M at five. And look, I know Texas A&M beat Florida. Don't come at me with that. Florida's a better football team right now. And if you've got the Texas A&M-Auburn game on, you see exactly what I'm talking about with Texas A&M struggling uh, to put Auburn away in that one. And then Ohio State at six. I, I just feel like the number of games you have, you have to start rewarding some of these teams that have made it through Stanley seven or eight Russell games. On the tackle. So I would have had Ohio State at six. And as the number of games it has continues, and they look the way they've looked today against Michigan State, then I think you can move Ohio State up into that conversation. All right. So for the time being, though, the differential in games is your difference in the ranks, right? Yeah, and look, the, the, the entire argument around having Ohio State at four is the eye test. Like, they look better than Florida or Texas A&M. And after what I saw at the end of the Indiana game, I'm just not so sure of that. Now, the way they've looked against Michigan State, I'm more willing to entertain. There's a throw on the perimeter, and Quillen will get back toward the original line. Jones pass is complete to number 82, Jacoby Quillen. And it'll be fourth down for Western Carolina. By the way, play before last, we got our first real look at space of Cayman Rucker, a true freshman from Hart County in Hartwell, Georgia, who has no problem making plays in a physical fashion. <laughs> Another one of those freshmen that they are not only really excited about, but really think they can be a good player. I mean, you've got three guys, Rucker, Pinder, Murphy, that they just could not rave enough about. Austin Chestnut is deep to take the punt. Playing in his final game at Keenan Stadium. The ball is going to hit and skip inside the 20. And with about five minutes gone in this fourth period of play, we get a timeout in Chapel Hill. Tar Heels in control. Third, so that means the Tar Heel possession will be controlled by Jace Reuter who was announced as one of those seniors before the ball game and uh, get a run right from the break. And that's Elijah Green from Blessed Trinity in Roswell, Georgia, picking up about 14 on first down. There's a look at uh, Jace Reuter. And, and, and you see Jace Reuter listed as a sophomore, but he's one of those guys that is going to graduate and has decided that he wants to go someplace where he can, he can get some playing time. So it was a nice moment for him to be recognized. Uh, on senior day as he's already told Mac Brown that he's gonna he's gonna go elsewhere because he wants yep. to play some football Elijah Green the carry Nigel Mans and Trevor Childers on the stop for Western Carolina Green is uh, the son of Victor Green who played 11 years in the National Football League most of them with the New York Jets and uh, a guy that uh, Phil Longo talked about yesterday Roddy at length too yeah, it said Elijah Green has looked really good as he's come along in, in his freshman season. And, and I think what he was really looking to see, you know, between Elijah Green, Josh Henderson, DJ Jones, British Brooks, who, who's the guy that in these situations is going to really take the step forward to be either the, the second guy with Javante Williams come the springtime or the lead dog well, once, you, uh, once you get to that point in time. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting scenario that faces Carolina to the point you brought up in the first half about, you know, with Michael Carter accepting the invitation to the Senior Bowl, Devontae Williams potentially a decision to make, and uh, Coach Brown was pretty candid with us yesterday about the value of having his uh, senior advisors on his coaching staff, notably Carol Moody, who is a longtime assistant in the NFL, longtime scout in the National Football League for three or four different organizations and it puts Javante Williams in perspective that he's getting the best possible information here and that's yeah. uh, that's got to be comforting for Mac Brown as well and, and you could say the same thing and he told us it's the same process and conversation that he's having with Deami Brown as well who has obviously had a fantastic season and anytime you have the type of season that he's had you would imagine that, that you're going to start to look forward so the the, the Advice that they're getting from the connections that that those guys have at the next level is invaluable when you're trying to make that decision. Yep. So Ruder kept it. 
Second down and uh, six coming up. Josh Henderson's coming to ball game. And he'll get the carry on the left side. And enough to pick up the first down at the 43 is Henderson. Well, Tar Heels, after a disappointing loss to Notre Dame, bounce back here today. They got six touchdowns in seven first-half possessions. Did Coach Brown's team. And have been able to kind of look at depth guys in on the offense and defensive side here in half number two. Reuter on a quick throw and beyond the reach of Mason Lawrence. And a quick reminder to you, two more ball games coming up for you on ACC Network. Next, we'll take you to Raleigh. ACC Network football presented by Dr. Pepper, Jeff Sims in Georgia Tech, Bailey Hockman, NC State. Set to ride at Carter Finley Stadium at four, and then tonight in primetime, presented by Geico, number 10 Miami and the Blue Devils of Duke. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George, there for you tonight in primetime. Elijah Green back in the ball game on second and 10. He's got 10. He's got 15 for Carolina on the first down play. Rogers the tackle in the secondary for the Catamounts. Green on the carry to the it's 42 like the, the confidence line. that you've seen from Elijah Green in this game. I mean, that first run down, was one that was decisive. He gets downfield, makes a man miss. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for because at six foot, 200 pounds, I mean, you have to imagine with the full off season, he's going to be able to either create more strength with that 200 pound frame, maybe even a put a little bit more weight on. Come into next season around 205, and with that combination of speed and power, it's going to be dangerous. I had a six minutes to go. Pressure coming from the Catamounts, and Reuter fumbles the ball, and it's picked up. And Western Carolina's got Nigel Manns headed to the end zone Nigel for the Mann touchdown. On the recovery of the fumble for the Western Carolina touchdown. Defensive score for Mans and the Catamounts, and Mark Spears' team gets on the board with a defensive touchdown. Watch the pressure coming off from the top of your screen. Someone's got to either be responsible for that guy or the quarterback's got to throw the ball hot off of him. Neither one of those two things happens, and Nigel Mans gets a, a touchdown that he'll never forget in Keenan Stadium. I, I will say, when, whenever you go for the chest bump and you end up on your bottom, whenever you end up on your back, like that, that, that means you need a little work on that. They're going to have to go through that and practice a little bit this week. Extra point is blocked. So it stays 49 to 9 at Keenan Stadium. The hit, the scoop, and the score. Nigel. Your seniors, those guys come out and you get messages from their families on the video board. That's a very nice touch by Carolina football. And they did that before the ball game today in Chas Surratt, one of the many being honored here. So Nigel Mann's 42-yard fumble return is the first touchdown of the day for Western Carolina. And Catamounts will uh, kick it away here with just under six minutes to go. And the kick is uh, fielded short. And D.J. Jones... Working back up the near sideline. That's where the Tar Heels will start, right around the 40. Jones, West Durham, Larisha Harris with us. Sam Howell's day is done, was done at halftime. And two more touchdown passes. Roddy only needed one, though, to have his 23rd straight game with a throwing score. Longest active streak in, uh, in FBS for Sam Howell. There's a catch by Kendall Carr. On the uh, first play of the, and that's Jefferson Boaz Jefferson you're looking Boaz. at at the quarterback spot. Six, six and a half from East Surrey High School in Pilot Mountain, North Carolina for the Tar Heels. It's a big quarterback there, six, six and a half, six, seven. <laughs> I see him sling a little bit. I was, I was waiting on you to kind of... <laughs> Say, give me your response to the physical specs on Boaz. Well, here's the, here's the thing that, that, that I always 
uh, struggled with with yeah. quarterbacks that tall. Like, it makes for really tall handoffs. And, and British Brooks did a nice job there. I mean, he's only listed five, ten and a half. But that handoff can sometimes get up in your neck when you've got a six, six quarterback, man. So it's a good job on both of those guys. Boaz getting it down into the belly. British Brooks giving the big pocket. Yeah, Boaz strikes pretty powerful pose. <laughs> he is the uh, fourth Tar Heel quarterback of the day. Here with four and a half to go. And this is British Brooks. The junior from Ashbrook High School in Gastonia, North Carolina, who, by the way, was noted in the comments yesterday with Mac Brown about the work he does each week as it relates to special teams and also scout team work and a walk-on out of Ashbrook. And guys like that, Roddy, that's your core football team right there. When you have a guy that, that works so hard for you, doing the dirty work on special teams, and, you know, Mac Brown, really said almost without us prompting about that with British Brooks yep. those guys are so valuable that you want to have opportunities to get them in the game and to see what they can do and have success Brooks in trouble there though runs to the edge and got tackled Willie Hampton transfer out of Garden City Community College first guy to get to British Brooks on the play it'll be second down loss of four on the play to the 48 yard line and the other, the other thing that's, that's valuable for Mac Brown is he's getting some of those linemen worked in as well. We saw, we've yep. seen a, a number of different iterations on the offensive line. We haven't talked much about those guys today, but the starting group did a really nice job doing what they're supposed to do, being physical up front, really dominating the line of scrimmage, getting a hat on a hat. Well, the other thing we've mentioned throughout the day is in this return to Chapel Hill as the head coach, Mac Brown has built that culture but that culture is also being formulated by former players who are now on staff now these are just guys in the quote football front office tommy Pigpen, the code defensive coordinator dre black corey holiday kevin donnelly great lineman director of high school relations we saw some other guys involved in it too that were part of the process here third down run for brooks oh no that's uh, elijah green who we mentioned earlier Gains on the tackle for the catamounts. Yeah, fourth down, down coming up. That, that part of this, Roddy, to me, is also pretty important to what Carolina ultimately wants to do here. Reggie Jones. It's, it's, a, it's a family atmosphere. And honestly, no one can sell North Carolina like guys that have been there. Mac Brown was said, it, it, you know, it's kind of funny. I talked to these guys who went to Carolina, and they talk about Carolina like there's no other place on earth. They absolutely love the university. It means so much to them. He said, sometimes I don't really... I don't really get it because I didn't go here, but they get emotional just talking about it. Reggie Jones was the guy to take the punt, but now with under two minutes to go, Ben Karen and Penn's Western D. <laughs> Is a country. I, I don't not there's, a continent. There's, there's no drawing. No, it is a continent. There's no oh, drawing lines. it is a continent, not a country. Okay. No, no, it's both. It's, it's, it's both. both. I feel Jordan like we're doing who's on first too. right now. I feel By like way, we're doing who's on first. Uh, <laughs> Makai Stanley. Larissa, would you care to chime in on this after you fixed me in the seats at Keenan? I actually a think tremendous it's, effort in the second half, by the way. I think it's whatever you feel in your heart. It can be a continent, wow. it can be an island, okay. it can be a nation. Oh what are we doing? Oh whatever you feel in your heart, that's what it it's, is. It, wow. It's not whatever you feel. In, it, it, it is literally all of those things. <laughs> okay, Roddy, you're right. Amazing how we took Catherine, Catherine Brown Ryan's Jeopardy question last night. Coach's daughter who won last night on Jeopardy. And we have turned it into a complete discussion among this broadcast crew. Jason Lico, quarterback on the keeper. With a minute to go. All right, Roddy, Carolina's going to go to Miami next Saturday. Final game of the regular season. Uh, Clemson determines how big that game is for Miami tonight at Blackburn. But that aside, pretty interesting matchup with two of the premier quarterbacks in the league and Sam Howell and De'Ara King. Well, well, it's also really interesting because the winner of that game, if you if the ACC gets two game, two teams in the college football playoff, the winner of that game has the inside track to the Orange Bowl as well. So yeah. it, 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 it's a really big game. And I think both teams will be really fired up about playing it. I, I, for one, am really excited to see it. 
throw in the flat here. It's Caleb Ferguson who had a play late in the first half. And you get a look at some of the young guys in the Carolina secondary making plays. And that is Christopher Holliday, who is the son of Corey Holliday, who we just showed you a moment ago, former great wide receiver at Carolina. Christopher is on the other side of the football from where his dad used to make plays for Mac Brown in his first run here in Chapel Hill. And Corey just one of the really, really fine people in athletic administration now in the ACC. Good to see Christopher with a play. You could tell the bench liked it. Link is come on here to finish this up in the final 15 seconds and Jason Linky on the quarterback that should be the final play of the ball game from the 30 yard line Tar Heels are going to go to 7 and 3 Mark Spear in Western Carolina 0 and 3 in their little fall series here before they line up in late February against Furman to start the Southern Conference season and the Tar Heels get into the secondary to make the play. Roddy, what'd you see today out of these Tar Heels? I, I saw an offense that was really sharp after a week ago, uh, really being stymied by, by Notre Dame. Uh, defensively, there's going to be some things to work on, obviously, but I think Mac Brown's going to be happy with his team's performance on offense, and that he's getting out of here with everybody uh, mostly healthy like they came into this game. Big day, Sam Howe, 287, two scores. Michael Carter, eight carries in his final game at Keenan Stadium and three touchdowns. Tar Heels convincing, 49 to nine will be the final. NC State, Georgia Tech ahead, Duke Miami tonight for Roddy Jones, Larisha Harris, our producer, Alex Farmatino, our director, Dennis Lanius, West Durham. Thanks for watching. The Huddle is next.